I've spent the past few months building this labor of love as a gift for my wife, celebrating our favorite Magic the Gathering set, Strixhaven School of Mages. In this video, I'm going to share with you how I went about building my first ever set cube and the choices that went into it, including the cards, the storage, and even my custom online landing page. My goal for this video is that I'll inspire you to build a set cube of your own favorite Magic set or just copy ours if you like Strixhaven as much as we do. For those uninitiated, a cube is a collection of cards built specifically to draft with. In this case, the cube just happens to recreate a beloved draft format, Strixhaven. The cards are shuffled together into one big pile, distributed into packs, and then drafted. With that out of the way, let's flash back to April of 2021 for a moment and the launch of Strixhaven. My wife is my primary IRL gaming partner and she absolutely fell in love with this set. The flavor of it and the more streamlined draft experience with five primary colleges to draft around just struck a chord with her. And while she fell in love with it and wanted to play it more and more, running drafts on Arena, cracking booster packs, I fell in love with it too. Every time it comes back around online, we have to run a few drafts, but it's just not the same as playing with real cards. And now, finally, I've immortalized the set forever in paper with a set cube. This video is split into a few parts. Part 1 covers the big picture goals for the cube. Part 2 will go over some of the more detailed choices involved in balancing the cube. And Part 3 will cover the presentation, including the storage options I chose and my custom-built Cube Cobra landing page. Now let's jump in with Part 1, my design goals. We loved Strixhaven Draft. It's a fantastic format with games that can go long, but some options for more aggressive decks if that's what you like to do. Lesson and Learn was a fun mechanic that gave players lots of options and made drafts interesting to navigate. And the flavor was so much fun. It was a much more lighthearted set than we were used to for Magic, and we fell in love with the characters, especially our boy Killian. However, the set was not without its flaws. If you only did a handful of drafts, you probably didn't notice, but it was very unbalanced. Silver Quill, the Black White Aggro deck, was far and away the best deck in the format. And the Red White Spirits deck was a huge flop, it just didn't work as advertised. The deck was supposed to interact with the graveyard and reward you for exiling stuff. It's just a shame it didn't work because I really do appreciate that the designers of this set tried something really unique. And similar case, although not quite as bad, with the Black Green deck Witherbloom. A lot of the life gain payoffs and little combos just weren't worth it. Combine that with the fact that there were only five color pairs to begin with since this was a guild set, and some players felt things got stale too quickly. So design goal number one was to rebalance the set, significantly improving the power of Lorehold, the red-white guild, and slightly improving the power of Witherbloom without giving more tools to the blue-green, blue-red, or black-white decks. This was also the last set, at least that I'm aware of, that included vanilla commons, that is, creatures with no abilities. And these were almost never right to actually put into your deck. And there were also, as in most sets, quite a few rares that were in the set for reasons other than draft, and either never got played, or if they did, were awful in a limited deck. So design goal number two would be to remove some of the worst cards in the set and replace them with something more interesting for players to open and play with. And finally, I wanted the cube to be able to fit inside of the box that I had planned, more on that later, and to fit within my budget, so I leaned towards a smaller, quote, smaller cube size. When it comes to set cubes, there are a few ways to approach this. A rule of thumb to approach something that looks like the official retail draft environment is to use four copies of every common, two of every uncommon, and one of every rare and mythic. Since the cards are just shuffled into one big pile and then distributed into packs, cards with higher quantities appear more often, mimicking rarity you would experience opening real packs. It is possible to open multiple rares in cube, but I'm fine with that, and that can be very fun. Some players, however, go as far as to increase those rarity numbers to as closely mimic the draft set as possible, but you're talking over a thousand cards at that point, which is a huge expense in terms of, of course, the cards themselves, but also the box you will need to store it, sleeves, and also a cube of that size would just become unruly. Every time you'd want to play with it, you'd have to shuffle a thousand cards before distributing packs, and that is a real cost as well. So I decided to use three copies of every common, two copies of every uncommon, and one of every rare and mythic as my baseline to build from. As is done in real magic sets, you can then tweak those numbers to balance the set. Stronger cards should be made more rare, and cards essential to a set's gameplay should be made more common. So design goal number three is to fit within this 3-2-1-1 parameter, roughly. So with the big picture goals in mind, let's move on to part two of this video, the specific card choices. Now, whether you build a set cube for Strixhaven or 
decide to do something else entirely, hopefully seeing my thought process here will help you with your own project. So first I started by importing my list into Cube Cobra using this fantastic tool from Lucky Paper, linked in the description below. Choose your set and your parameters, then import to Cube Cobra or your spreadsheet to start tinkering. This allowed me to quickly get the rough outline that I would be working from. Cube Cobra is the go-to resource for managing your cube list online, and it has a great community around it if you're looking for ideas, which I can't recommend enough. So let's talk about card choices that would aim to rebalance the set. The first thing I did was remove a bunch of the lowest performing cards. I knew some I wanted to cut from experience playing with the set, but to put data to it, I turned to 17lands.com. It's a tool that Magic Arena players can install to track their performance playing drafts, but then the data is compiled into 17lands' web tool that you can use to analyze the performance of cards in a particular set. So I pulled up the data for Strixhaven, sorted by the game and hand win rate, which is a good proxy for the card's overall performance or power level. And the baseline win rate to compare cards to here is roughly 55%, not 50% since players using 17 lands are better than the average player. So we're looking for cards that fall way below that 55% win rate as they would be cards you wouldn't ever put into your deck if you're familiar with the set and we don't want to trick players who aren't familiar with the set. So it's better to just remove them outright in my opinion. Removing these cards will also give us the room to add new cards we're excited about without changing the overall balance between the number of cards in each color. Now I'm not going to go over every change in detail, but I will give you a quick overview to help you understand my thought process. So looking at the list for Strixhaven, starting with commons, this group of cards way underperforms the average. For example, Novice to Sector. This was intended to be a sacrifice outlet and enabler for Witherbloom. This card just didn't work, it was way too slow, so I replaced it with Bushmeat Poacher from Ikoria, a card that serves a similar role, but is much more powerful. So this should be an exciting card for somebody that has drafted Strixhaven before, sees a card they've never seen before, but would understand how it fits into the set. I also cut a few of the uncommons. I cut Secret Rendezvous and Detention Vortex in white, swapping them for Beloved Beggar and Sacred Fire, both of which should be good pieces in the red-white control deck. And I cut Spell Satchel for Herbology Instructor, another powerful uncommon for Witherbloom that synergizes with all the life gain stuff. And it's a nice bonus that this card is actually based on Strixhaven. And I took the same approach with the rares, cutting the ones that either never got played or ended up being traps. This gives players more chances to open the exciting rares everyone wants to open, or gives players familiar with the set something new to open and build around. There are some powerful rares in the other guilds you could add that would fit the themes nicely, especially from the Strixhaven Commander products, but I didn't want to risk making the already powerful decks even better. I was particularly excited about adding Deafening Clarion, a powerful rare that should help the red-white control deck fight off fast starts from Silver Quill and should be a strong first pick in the draft. I also added Zimone and Dina from March of the Machine for flavor reasons and as a cool incentive to try three colors. There were a bunch of other new rares added, 12 in total. I won't cover them all here, but you can see the full list of these and all the other changes on my Cube Cobra page if you're interested. So those were the major card changes, but I also tweaked a few of the card's rarities. I reduced Tangle Trap from three copies to two, treating it like an uncommon. There are times where you may want a copy of this in your sideboard, but it's usually the last pick in the draft anyway. I also changed environmental sciences from three copies to four, as it is an essential enabler for a lot of the fun three or four color decks you may want to build, and provides decks some much needed consistency, especially with a powerful two color aggro deck in the format to compete with. Environmental Sciences was a very high pick in Retail Strixhaven, but I wanted to give more players in the draft a chance to get one if they wanted it. But that is just the cards in the main set. Strixhaven also had a fun bonus sheet known as the Mystical Archive, a collection of some of the most powerful and iconic spells in Magic's history that could be opened in regular draft packs. Every pack had one Mystical Archive. Most were uncommon, but you could open a rare or mythic as well. To make this work for Cube, I decided to include as a baseline two of every uncommon Mystical Archive, and one of every rare and mythic. You would shuffle all the archives and include one in every pack, so it would be more likely to get an uncommon, but a good shot at a rare or mythic as well. Similar to the rest of the set though, I made some tweaks to the archives to reduce the likelihood of opening the ones that weren't as fun to play with. The uncommons I didn't find very good were all reduced from two copies to one. I also removed some of the rares and mythics that weren't very good or niche and unlikely to work. If I was on the fence, budget factored in as well. And now on to part three of this video and that's the presentation of the cube. First was the box. I ended up going with the deck's supreme game chest 
Hashtag not sponsored. I had never personally used this box before, but I'm very happy with the quality you get for the price. You could spend a lot more, but I already had quite a bit into acquiring the singles and didn't want to go too deep on the box. Of course, you could always upgrade the box later, but I've been very happy with this. The fabric lining is nice and it gives it a premium feel. And this box was large enough to fit this very large cube, including the mystical archive, plus lands and these extra sections to include tokens and dice. The Velcro is very stiff, but I imagine that will loosen with time. I went with the Dragon Shield matte sleeves, my personal favorite sleeve, and went for gold since I thought it suited the vibe of Strixhaven very well. I also happened to have two Strixhaven D20s from our pre-release packs back when it came out, so I included those here as well. To complete this project, I included a QR code inside the box. This links you to the Cube Cobra landing page. This is helpful if you play with anyone unfamiliar with the set, and this landing page would give them a brief synopsis of the cube, what decks are available to draft, and for those more familiar with the set, a detailed list of changes. You can also view and peruse the entire cube list if you wish, which is color-coded so you can quickly see the cards that were added that weren't in the original set. We've drafted the cube a few times and it has been an absolute blast and a fantastic addition to our Magic collection. However, if you're looking for a project a bit more budget friendly and something you could throw together with the cards you have laying around your house right now, you should check out my video about how to build your own battle box. And if you made it this far, don't forget to drop a like and consider subscribing for future Magic the Gathering videos just like this one. We'll see you next time.